Soviet Treasure Island is gold, and I love that it's become a meme for some reason. Not just because I now have the ability to write off its coattails, but because a lot of people are now being introduced to some of the finest animation that the Soviet Union had to offer. Seriously, if you haven't, you should absolutely watch it. There's even videos with English subtitles on YouTube. I grew up on it, I've seen it more times than I can bother to count, but this isn't a video about the cartoon. As good as it is, this video is about its lesser known sequel that was made roughly 17 years after its release, a PC game. Yeah, this was a thing that happened a lot in the 2000s, a random IP from the Soviet Union just happens to get a game made for the PC for the Russian market and usually they're just so-so. And that's what happened with Soviet Treasure Island, it's yet another game that I honestly would have never expected to be made, let alone actually come out. And here's why I think this is weird. Does anyone remember TV shows like Flying Rhino Junior High or Ivan of the Yukon? Like classic Canadian television. Imagine if they suddenly had a game come out right now for the Switch. That'd be weird, right? Yeah, that's pretty much my reaction when I found out that this exists. Alright, so let's just start off with the game. Chapter 1. Now, for context and obvious spoilers, in the Treasure Island cartoon, the good guys get the treasure. The only pirates that are on board are Long John Silver, who's to be tried for his crimes, and this one idiot holding the sails together, and they leave on the Hispaniola, the only boat that went to Treasure Island. Okay, yeah, that makes sense, right? But if we go to the game, the pirates have managed to build a brand new shooter in a matter of minutes, successfully catch up to the protagonist, and then they boarded and captured all of them except for Jim. Jim wakes up from losing consciousness and walks over to the next screen, where you see a classic bit from the show reanimated. This one right here. The pirates gambling notice Jim, considering he's like 10 to 15 feet away, and give chase. Jim runs like 20 feet and stands still to talk to the audience like you're Dora the Explorer. <laughs> oh no, am I in my 20s judging a game meant for 6 year olds? Anyway, the pirates catch up, and my only option is to run even further away. The pirates are also thankfully alcoholics, and fall down to their deaths by a watery grave. Anyway, since it's safe now, turns out touching bottles of rum summons the spirit of Billy Bones from Purgatory, which acts as a checkpoint. You know, this is a great lesson, actually. Remember, kids... If you drink enough booze to start seeing ghosts of pirates suffering from liver failure, that's just real life backing up your current save file. <laughs> Additionally, you get roadblocked instantly by a pirate pacing back and forth with a loaded rifle on, you know, what they think is an empty ship, because you, you gotta justify your presence somehow. But Jim's been a good boy. He exercises every day by going to a windmill and crouching to make sure he doesn't get his head bonked. You know, instead of walking around. Then, he also crawls underneath a cart. And then you jump to get a banana, which are good for your health. This um, is exercise, I guess. Crouching, crawling, and doing a jump off a box. Right, so yeah, the pirate instantly spots me, shoots twice out of a musket, and then completely forgets that I exist. After crawling my way past the screen, I'm supposed to run away as fast as I can. And my reward for the Arthurian bravery I showed is exposition. While Dr. Livesey, you know, this Chad right here, was captured, he was able to write a very lengthy letter to Jim telling him to stay put and that they'll figure out a way out of this. Uh, yeah, you know what? That seems reasonable. Jim's a young lad and Captain Smollett, this Giga Chad right here, can absolutely kick the ass out of a bunch of pirates given the opportunity maybe we should listen to him yeah we don't listen to him we warp to a training session with a talking scarecrow that will give us bananas for being able to kick his ass yeah the writing here is awful at this point i 100 percent realize that the intended target audience is children it's a very long, very annoying, but like, it's a pretty useful combat tutorial. And uh, what I should mention is that the voice acting in this game, you know, the one that I'm talking over, it varies from being so-so for Jim and the Scarecrow to being absolutely amazing. 
And that's because they actually got the original voice actors for Smollett and Livesey back in for this role. Granted, you know, they're not quite able to hit the same voice that they did in the 80s, the voice of Smollett is somehow more incomprehensible, and their talents are really wasted on this dialogue, but man, it's appreciated. Anyway, you go into the whole berth, the inside of the ship where the pirates are sleeping, so you sneak by not to wake any of them up, right before you find a bunch of cherry pits, and the ghost of the scarecrow pops up to make your life worse? So yeah, you beat the pirates up down here, beat a few up on the deck, one of them pulls a gun, but my cherry pit kills them faster. I hop onto the dinghy and see a recreation of classic animation, but with way less shading. And that's how I got to Treasure Island. Chapter 2! Этот щенок удрал на остров. Догоните его и пустите его кровь. Чего это вдруг ты начал командовать, Джон? Может быть, ты теперь капитан? Найди мальчишку, или я разнесу твою тупую башку. Yeah, that's not Johnny, nor is that the pirate's voice. But man, a kids game where they say to make me bleed is pretty metal. I'm not gonna lie. I wouldn't have expected that to still be allowed. So, on land, I beat up a few pirates, get stopped by a sharp and allegedly poisonous shrub, go the other direction, and get shot to death. Oh. Well, I'd respect the game a lot more for just ending it here and being infuriated at it, like it's a kid's game. Death is nothing but a very minor setback, you know, kind of like how it is in real life. So, I kill the guy, take the rum, walk over back, get over the shrub, and get ambushed by more pirates. At this point, you enter the jungle swamp, and it becomes one of the worst platformers I've ever played. Y you see that? That was literally me just trying to jump. The hitboxes for landing are quite generous when they want to be, but the velocity and midair control is super unpredictable. It's either too floaty, or too much of an invisible mid-air brick wall, there's nothing else. Alright, I might as well use this to talk about the graphics. They're very budget, but they're super faithful to the cartoon. Like, I respect the fake reflections and the well-layered fake shadows that they do. It does a lot to improve the immersion. There is a weird thing in the cutscenes though, for example like in the intro where it shows a character that's not in the cartoon or in this game, but only here for like two seconds. But like, other than that, I've got nothing to say, so I should talk about the music real quick too. They use some of the lay motifs from the cartoon and the instrumentation works for the game that this is, but none of the songs are memorable, they feel like royalty-free music that you'd use in a kid's game. You know, kinda like how this is. Just listen to it for a bit. <laughs> Yeah, you kind of get what I mean? They're like very simple, very generic, very... Bleh. And there's only roughly 15 minutes of it, which isn't bad. I've played games with way smaller soundtracks, but when I don't really think of any of the songs are particularly good... Yeah, there's a reason why I spent a lot of time stitching together the soundtrack from the Soviet cartoon for this video's music instead. It really didn't take any effort to rip the music from this game, but... It's just not worth it. Anyway, back to the game, I get eaten by a crocodile, jump between vines, pick up a bottle and use it to hold a firefly, die a lot of times along the way, and then use the bottle to go through a cave and pick up a chameleon's mushroom in there, which make me mostly invisible. Or it's a hallucinogenic, 50-50 odds, I don't know where Jim reads this stuff. So yeah, do some more terrible jumping, fight more pirates, this jungle section only took me 15 minutes, but Man, those 15 minutes felt like a couple hours. But I find the fort, and there's a guard looking back and forth ready to shoot me dead. But thankfully, the drug mushroom actually lets me kick it down, and I guess I killed the pirate inside it? Or... Oh, no, wait, he's pacing back and forth here, like... Why didn't he just shoot me? 
All right. Anyway, I run away and then look into the window to see pirates taunt Captain Smollett. No idea where the other members of my crew are, but you know what? Good enough for me. Just hit the alarm gong and, you know, they run over to try and kick my ass. Doesn't work, but surprisingly I'm not shot dead. And I rescue Smollett from a fate mildly annoying. And to my questions about where the rest of the hostages are, he responds with... Nothing useful. Thanks, Smollett. So now it's up to me and Captain Smollett to rescue the rest. And I play a very simple children's game to solve this puzzle. Well, very simple for me. I could take on a bunch of second graders in both their classes and in a cage match. I'm an adult. Alright, so I get to control Smollett for this bit, who's only useful to pass through obstacles Jim wouldn't otherwise be able to go through. And I mean, I guess his sword kills bees too. Anyway, we get to the dinghy and are ready to assault the Hispaniola by our twosome because... Uh... Chapter 3! Look, like many problems you would have in schools, kids, you can't solve it with words, but you can solve it with violence. I will say the one time you actually control Smollett in combat, he hits like a truck going a hundred an hour. I mean, the game is really just a beat-em-up at this point with the same enemies, and there's only, like, one puzzle left. You find Johnny, and he's standing by all the gunpowder, smoking a pipe, you know, because that's smart. And I have to beat him up without him spitting it out, which kills everyone on board if I do. I'll be honest, this is, like, the only puzzle in the game that took me more than five seconds figuring it out. Because, like, here's the thing. You have to punch and kick him, which seems simple, but kicks are done by crouching, holding back, and then hitting, and like, it's a terrible move otherwise, I completely forgot that I could kick. And like, this is only 20 minutes in. A little walk later, we get Smollett back into the captain's cabin, beat up more pirates that are still on the ship for some reason, raise the sails, and get to the cannon, where we shoot a single cannonball at the fort that I rescued Smollett from, and that... that somehow saves Livesey, Trelawney, and Ben Gunn? Like... If they were there, why didn't we just take him in the first place? Anyway, uh, they congratulate me on becoming a real man now for, um... I mean, I guess the murder? Yeah, this is the end of the game? This makes me think that the game was supposed to be a lot larger, way higher quality, but then they ran into budget problems along the way, and I mean, I guess that makes sense, but like, how much money would you expect to make from a reboot of an old cartoon from the 80s? It's just a shame that it's pitifully short, it took me roughly 30 minutes to beat, start to finish, you saw everything the game had to offer. And anyway, I guess that was all in all really stupid. I give it a final score of valued at half a shilling except in modern day pounds. Mind you, I don't think the game is bad and shouldn't be paid for as a result. No, 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 no. I just don't think that it respects your time with how short it is. Entire tutorial segments were completely wasted because you went through the tutorial, they appeared once, and that's it. That's all your replayability. All you can do afterwards is just try to beat the game at a higher difficulty. And you know what the weird thing about this game is? It came on two discs, which I mean, it wasn't that big of a deal in 2005, a two CD game wasn't that rare, but like, I've never seen a multi CD game that takes less than an hour to beat entirely, cause I was expecting a couple hours, I wasn't expecting me to do it in an evening. So well, I guess that's what I get, might as well toss in a fun fact that I found while researching the game. So. The studio that made this, Action Forms, who you might or might not know from Vivisector or Cryostasis, yeah, they planned on doing another reboot of an old 80s cartoon from the Soviet Union, this time The Adventures of Captain Rongo, and it was gonna be a 3D game that was trying to mimic the art style? The game never saw the light of day, but I managed to find some footage of the gameplay, god knows how any of it was found, because I tried to do more research other than this one video of this one YouTuber that had like a couple hundred views. Nobody else was ever talking about it. There's definitely going to be a playable build out there, you know, probably on a burnt CD at some former employee's house, but 
Yeah, no, I'd be interested. It'd be neat to see how far they got before they had to shut down. Um, you should totally watch that cartoon too if you have the time. Like, it's a kid's show, but when you have scenes like this... Yeah, you damn well know you're in for a better ride than this game.